Story 10 of Fabulous Tales and Fables ASAP The Lost and Found Prince Hey, wait a second. Can Story 10 even be seen before graduating the cycle of Stories 1 through 9? No, it can't. L-O-L. But oh, alrighty. Here's a sample. I'm pretty sure he'll be a fake, you know, said the taller of the two men, arms crossed. He'll be a wolf in sheep's clothing, creeping in to rip people off. Not up to us, said the other man, of average height, also arms crossed. Remember, the doctor is to be paid well even if he fails. All the same, so it doesn't much matter. Dr. Appletree, Dr. I presume. Dr. Appletree, I presume. Dr. Appletree, I presume said the three welcomers, in scripted unison, to the first person emerging from the coach. This had to be him. He looked the part. Ah, oh, you got the wrong guy, said the preoccupied traveler, fussing with bag and case. That apple tree guy went ahead on horseback. He must be nearby. Oh, but his trunk is here. It's the blue one. The welcome party all frowned, bewildered. One by one, they turned. Standing right behind them was that bearded traveler. Didn't mean to startle you, said Dr. Appletree, smiling. Hey, wait a second. Does this Dr. Appletree think he's the big star of Story 10 when he answers the big S.O.S.? Who is he? We don't even know. But oh, all righty, here's a little story from his past. <laughs> Once, in times past, when Apple Tree was a student doctor, he was brought in to watch and take notes on an unusual treatment. It was at an isolated madhouse where a patient's family had just approved extreme measures to attempt a cure. The patient, a man whose mind had dissociated for longer than anyone knew, in bright daylight was brought down to the pond, a place where people were washed, weather permitting. Apple tree had observed that the patient had two moods, a good one and a bad. In the bad one, he would scratch and gnash at anyone who was near. In the good one, you could trim his fingernails if you dared. He would smile and call out ecstatically, Hi, Stancia! Hi, girl! Hi there! Ha hi! This, even though no one had a clue who Stancia was. When he stood, he rocked his short, stocky frame back and forth, back and forth on rigid legs. When he walked, he paid attention less to his immediate path than to his happy hallucination. Here's what we do, said the presiding therapist. We walk him into the water. Let him wade around as he likes. If he goes deep, he'll just have to make an effort to save himself, and in the effort his wits should return to him. They did so, leading him in and leaving him to wade alone and unassisted, and with dignity. Hi there, the patient called, happily staring into space. Hi there, girl, Stancia, hi. <laughs> Smiling, he ploughed shallow, then deep, shallow, then deep too deep. His legs kept him going as he went below and stayed below. Bubbles popped up, then stopped. Apple Tree got ready to dive in, but was held back. Do not interfere, reminded the presiding doctor, and his assistants enforced the command. Pendroy, for that was the patient's name, drowned and Mr. Appletree, 
Not quite yet, doctor. Left that isolated madhouse, never to return, for he then understood and rejected its house policy, which was, we cure who we can, and we let the rest die. Sink or swim was a method that does not work in all cases. Indeed, it didn't work in that one. You have been listening to some excerpts from The Lost and Found Prince, Story 10 of Owen T. Duggan's Fabulous Tales and Fables ASAP.